So now in this video, we're going to look at the PNP, Bipolar Junction Transistor Switch. We just looked at the NPN, Bipolar Junction Transistor Switch, in the last video, where we also did the timed fade-off circuit. So when we press the button, the transistor will turn on, the LED will turn on instantly. When we release it, the capacitor is going to keep the transistor on for a period of time, and then it's going to fade off. And so we'll see that coming up. Now, to begin with, we have the uh, switch here and the uh, top of the switch connected to the negative rail. The gray jumper is coming to that top pin. This top pin is always connected to that top pin, so it's like one long row. Same with the bottom, just to uh, get that out of the way. When we press the button, then that connects all four pins together. So, we're going to grab a uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor and connect the the uh, switch there to the uh, base of the transistor so 10,000 ohms and so the base of the transistor will be one spot below that orange jumper because as you can see here the emitter goes to the positive rail so we'll grab the transistor and I have one of my illustrations here that shows the pin layout and by the way if it's a TO92 package it's a bipolar junction transistor, whether NPN or PNP. I find that it has this pin layout if it starts with 2N. And I mean 2, not like P2 or something, but 2N. Uh, whether it's PNP or NPN, emitter, base, collector. That's what I found so far. And uh, so that's probably going to be the pin layout. So now the left pin is the emitter. I'll turn it this way. Now the top pin is the emitter put the emitter to the orange jumper and the uh, base to the resistor right there zoom in a little bit to get a better look so now we will wire up our load and we're gonna protect the LED we're gonna use 5 volts with a 220 ohm resistor so I'm putting that to the bottom pin of the transistor there the collector and don't want to go in at that angle unfortunately so these are thin pins I'm gonna show you something quick and they kinda get bent so my depth perception was off because I was looking at the camera so you can just take a screwdriver here and uh, just kinda squeeze them back into shape there so now hopefully it goes in I'm going to the uh, collector the bottom pin of the transistor and there we go it slid in uh, pretty well and then we're gonna take the LED and uh, put that from the resistor to the negative rail to ground right there so the long lead the anode goes to the resistor short lead the cathode goes to the gray jumper right there pretty straightforward so hopefully you can see that uh, better so now we have the switch part of our circuit pretty straightforward right there the LED is lit we're gonna grab the uh, capacitor so I'm grabbing a 10 or 100 I mean microfarad capacitor so it's uh, not really all showing up there's a 100 right there and you can see zero microfarad and uh, but it's a 100 microfarad capacitor larger capacitor will mean more time with a 10 kilo ohm resistor there and a smaller capacitor will mean less time so I'm doing something a little awkward because this is a PNP circuit the uh, negative side of the capacitor we are not connecting directly to the rail I'm connecting it to the switch where the uh, resistor is so let's uh, move uh, that way right there putting the negative side there but the uh, positive side of the capacitor I'm putting to the positive rail so that's the most positive side part of the circuit I should say and so we don't have to worry about reverse charging the capacitor so now we have our circuit I press the button and I accidentally lost it but I press the button right now the LED is fully on and the LED is fading off it's a little hard to tell at first but uh, it is now we can get the power supply and see that a little easier so there we have it's gonna go to a 13 milliamps right there this isn't completely accurate and uh, when it's right on the edge it kinda uh, flickers to uh, 13 and 12 but in case we got 13 I let go it's still holding 13 milliamps that's when it was saturated 
Now it's the active region while it's dropping and then when it gets to a basically zero, especially when the LED doesn't light anymore, that's the cutoff region. So that means the capacitor ran out of stored charge and that's how it keeps the transistor going. That side's more negative, that side's more positive, current flows, and or you can think of negative, you can think of electron flow moving through there. That allows electrons to flow this way until the uh, capacitor runs out of charge. So when you're dealing with negative voltages in relationship to something, it's easier to think of electron flows at time. But in any case, that's all topics for other videos, longer videos, for people that really like long lectures. This video series is focused on the people that ask me to just quickly uh, get through the video for the most part and uh, get the circuit, show interesting circuits, whatnot. So check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Make sure you click like, subscribe, and the bell. I will see you in the next video.